gave me. Thank you. Um, I'd like to talk to you tonight about a sustainability angle for, sustain uh, for Fremantle's um, 50 year, um, sorry, 200 year uh, future. Uh, just wanted to start by uh, having a look at another place in the world, Germany. And um, the, the green agenda has really been set elsewhere. It's not really happening here in Perth yet. And you can see that um, with the statistics for Germany. Um, by 2050, they'll have 80% less carbon, 50% less car use, 100% carbon free power, and all buildings um, that are rebuilt to use 50% less energy, which is quite remarkable. And um, in Perth, we could be called the biggest loser. Um, <laughs> some stats here which illustrate it. Um, so, on the bike front, uh, we've only got 175 metres of bike lanes in Perth, Perth square kilometre compared against the uh, other Australian and New Zealand cities who have a whopping 412. Um, people using uh, public transport and bicycles and can walking to, as a way of getting to and from work, only 16% here in Perth and 20% uh, is the regional average. And finally, um, uh, superior public transport, so that's things like trains, uh, light rail and buses with a dedicated bus lane. Um, we've only got 50 metres per square kilometre and uh, the rest of Australia and New Zealand have 82. So we're lagging behind, but um, I think that the German um, agenda could be a cue for us for where to head to. Um, on Another place to, to look, I think, about creating a sustainable future is to um, try and optimise the opportunities that come from amalgamation with the local government authorities. Um, if Fremantle amalgamates with other um, LGAs, there is an opportunity to look at um, a light rail network and the scale of the region would be such that it could be economically justified. And there are a lot of benefits that um, come from putting in light rail, economic benefits. And um, there's three I'll just explain to you now. First one is that land values go up. So homeowners benefit with their land values going up. Retail and commercial um, land values go up. As a result of that, the rates go up and um, stamp duty does. So those benefits are all captured by and received by government and part of that can be used as a funding mechanism to, to pay for this kind of infrastructure. Um, so I think there's an opportunity with this sort of economy of scale to look at this kind of activity. And uh, just to kind of capture the sort of essence of the things that could be looked at, looking at the footprint of Fremantle and setting a target and something, a big percentage that really reflects what's happening in the world um, and the leading edge of uh, what cities are doing. Uh, second thing is uh, looking at affordable, dense and diverse housing. And uh, I think the, th and the third and final point is around public transport, which I mentioned, and also bike lanes. And to, to kind of put a wrapper around all of that stuff, if you do um, provide more housing, more affordable housing, and develop the infrastructure to support um, uh, the city operating more um, efficiently and increase productivity. A natural byproduct of that is that businesses will pop up. So you're going to get the economic diversification and you're going to have uh, less vacancies in the retail space. All of these things will kind of be naturally born about as a result of achieving these things here. So there's uh, many other additional benefits. And I'll just finish off um, with this slide. I don't know if you are uh, interested in Dr. Seuss, but um, uh, this is a book of his called The Lorax, and um, I thought it was quite interesting. The Lorax was a mythical tree, and it was used to make all sorts of things, and they used, they made so many things out of it, the Lorax became extinct. And uh, I think it's worth thinking about the microcosm of Fremantle as um, a small, as though it's the world, and what are the, how can you maximise the resources and what's available here, and, and really create as many opportunities as is possible because of all of the things that we've got, public transport, sun, wind, we've got a legacy of uh, history and culture and to really build upon those things and, and maximise the potential, but in doing so, leaving it, creating a legacy for future generations.
Thank you.